Hey guys, Ben Laverty here. What's happening? I'm here with Karen Kirkwood White, and she is a council candidate for Chatham Kent Ward 6. That's so great. thank you, Karen, for coming on and sitting in the hot seat. Um, we got we got some really bright lights, and we don't know what's going on with the camera. So if you see us like bright and stuff, that's what's happening. We we don't know what's going on with lights, but. It is what it is, so hopefully we can all deal with it. So we're going to ask her a couple questions, and if you have questions, we definitely want you to ask and engage and participate in the conversation, because uh, again, that's what we're here for. We had Art Sterling on earlier, and we'll have Chris June on later tonight. Right. So, um, Karen, like, uh, you're runner for council. Right. Why? Why? Well, I have the time. I'm okay. going to be retiring a week from Friday. Okay. And uh, I have the interest. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of experience, having run for council before, um, way, way back, 35 okay. years ago. I know things have changed a lot in 35 years, but uh, I'm still very interested in community building and uh, believe that I've got a lot of experience, leadership opportunities that have been presented that uh, have resulted in some really interesting uh, partnerships over awesome. the years. So um, you, you have a lot of experience and you probably know a ton of people locally just with the United Way. So tell us uh, about the United Way, your position there and how long you've been in that and how that really applies to um, everything that you will apply to a possible position on council. Okay, so um, actually returned to Chatham, southwestern Ontario in uh, the late 70s. I was living in Thunder Bay for nine years. And um, my very first position as a volunteer here was with the Canadian Mental Health Association. Okay. I started with them and uh, very quickly uh, was invited to uh, be on their board of directors. And then one of the staff members resigned from the position, so I applied for the position and I became secretary for the Canadian Mental Health Association. Okay. Um, and then the executive director of the United Way uh, mm -hmm. retired and uh, that position was open and I became uh, the executive director. Awesome. In 1983 on Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Um, yes. So as you, as you run for council, uh, I know you haven't really been out campaigning, not many people have been really campaigning hard right now, but what do you think the challenges Chatham Kent faces and Ward 6 would face in your opinion? I'm really looking forward to an opportunity to um, create a better balance between the business sector, the government sector, and the not-for-profit not sector. I like to describe it um, as a three-legged stool. Okay. Uh, community as a three-legged stool. And each community requires a very effective government, local government, right. a very effective business sector, and a non-profit sector. And if the balance gets a little off, um, the stool has a tendency to fall over. So right. I'm really hoping to be able to provide some opportunities for a better uh, possibility of working together with business and government to at least demonstrate to the community that the voluntary sector, the nonprofit sector, has a has a very very important role to play right. in building. And, and what could you what could you do that people would understand? to get, make, put any of this in action? I think more, more of the same that uh, we've been involved in over the last uh, at least 15 or 20 years. Uh, most people will, will know of the creation of Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. Eastside Pride, the Children's Safety Village, NeighborLink. These were all initiatives that were incubated by the United Way and required a lot of mobilization of community assets and uh, and the opportunity to bring volunteers and other community people together to right. focus on something that was really important to them. And um, I think that's one of the things that might be missing, uh, that we could do a better job at, um, trying to create an opportunity for more people to have a voice in what's really important to them. Right. And requires a lot of listening. So Lots of listening. And we're listening, listening to them uh, right now. Uh, Marjorie... Ryan, Sue, Jay, and Karis. 
Uh, hi, hi everybody. So again, hey listen, hit that share button, hit the like button if you have anything you like. Uh, hopefully you like just us hanging out here. But uh, feel free to ask questions, engage, share your opinions because that's what we're here for, that's what we want for you. And everything goes a lot greater when you are participating. Okay, so um, what, um, so what challenges do you think we face um, for health? Okay, so Chen Ken doesn't have the greatest health. We don't have the greatest mental health if you look at some of the stats. And what can you do or what do you think uh, we can do in the community to kind of help move that forward? Um, and that could be better eating, uh, more activity, uh, stuff like that. I think you just answered the question, right? and I know how but, I know how focused you are on on being fit and eating healthy, and I think there's been a lot of work, uh, a lot of great work done already by the local municipality and trying to identify the things that make a healthy community, the social determinants of health, you know, focusing on poverty reduction and mm -hmm. affordable housing and all of those things that uh, that make a great community. Um, the, I've been involved with the Chatham-Kent Community Strategic Plan for a number of years and um, we've really tried to focus on the things that make a better community, a healthier community for for the people who live and work and play here. Okay, and uh, I, I joined you guys not too long ago at the United Way there uh, for a meeting about tiny houses. Right, right. And um, you know, you'll probably get somebody will ask here uh, shortly about social housing, availability of uh, rental units or any units. Um, what's your take on that? What's your opinion? Where do you go on that? Well, it's very interesting because uh, I have had a, a Pinterest account for tiny homes for at least yeah. the last two and a half years. And uh, when Dr. David Lapierre uh, approached us a, a year and a half ago to host meetings uh, mm -hmm. with regard to the tiny homes, uh, we jumped at that um, through our participation on the Prosperity Roundtable. And then we had the opportunity recently to visit um, a manufacturer up in Wallaceburg right. that is uh, actually building tiny homes. Tiny homes, I think, are, are going to be something that we're going to have to do a little more research on because yep. I think um, there's, an, there's an expression that we use in the social sector, not about us, without us. Okay. And um, I think that we need to do a little more homework to see whether that is uh, a viable solution to some mm -hmm. of the people who are, are um, wanting the, that minimalist kind of yeah. uh, living style. Right. Um, they're cute. They are cute. But they're very tiny, and <laughs> there's uh, there's not a lot of space. I mean, I would love yeah. to have one for a craft room yeah. by itself, but um, yeah. And What kind know, of crafts would you be doing? Oh, I do a lot of card making. Okay. I do a lot of uh, just playing. Like scrapbooking play and stuff? Well, I used to, I started with scrapbooking, but okay. I found it kind of... Um, boring actually so I started, well now you can just post I everything on the phone you know <laughs> sorry <laughs> um and pour and paint pouring i've done a little bit of that lately um it's a great stress reliever and it's really an opportunity to kind of escape from you know the reading that you have to do to keep up on all the latest uh trends and, and uh, community building all right, let's see who we got here scott rose uh Thanks, bill scott. carney chris glafford how, how you guys hey, doing chris. Um, I'm so glad to see Karen's name on the candidates list. She's a voice of reason and has a wow. lot of experience in many fields that involve keeping our community safe and operational. Yeah. Let's talk about keeping our community safe and operational. Well, right at the moment, actually, um, I'm co-chairing the, the committee that, uh, that Marjorie Crew is actually working very closely to, uh, with uh, Chief Khan. Uh, okay. Trying to ensure that uh, our community is as safe as we can make it. Uh, a lot of neighborhood meetings going on right. to try and identify how we can get at some of the root causes of some of the issues that uh, that the community is facing. So, um, yeah, and meetings coming up after I retire. After so, you retire. So, yes. And we got more people. We must be getting off work or something. Thomas C., how are you doing? Um, let's see here. As you can see, community members across Chatham Kent approach Karen and have been approaching Karen for decades because she gets things done. This is a good thing. Uh, I feel this is the type of worker bee we need on council. So you got a little bit of support here. Yeah, thanks, Karis. I <laughs> appreciate uh, that. James, Actually, how you doing? Shelly, Amy, uh, Thomas. Um, what is your, I mean, you've been involved 
in a ton of community projects, right? right? right. And, and generally, probably when people come up with a, uh, an idea for a community project, especially when it comes to anything social, you probably get a knock on the door or an email or something. Mm -hmm. What is your greatest um, community project that you've been involved in that you uh, think has just done so well? You know, I've, I've been asked this question several times in the last, particularly the last couple of weeks as yep. I'm nearing retirement. You know, what's, what's the thing that you remember uh, the best of all of the things you've done? And, you know, I have to, I have to think about all of the work that we began uh, round about the time of municipal amalgamation when a lot of the outlying communities were feeling left out and, mm -hmm. you know, Chatham gets everything. Yep. Well, that's not the case, but that that's, perception is always reality, right? right? Um, we really started a process. Uh, the process was called Nurture the Future, and we began a process where we went out and actually had kitchen table meetings with the citizens throughout Chatham. Now, kitchen Canada. table meetings, meaning you're in, at the kitchen at the table kitchen in the house. table, talking to people about what was important to them, and out of those discussions came decisions around uh, safety. Uh, the right. Children's Safety Village was... Um, an initiative that was born out of those kitchen table conversations, uh, mm -hmm. supporting Marjorie and her neighbors in the East End and the formation of East Side Pride. Right. Um, a conversation on the golf course with a gentleman who had been involved with Habitat for Humanity in uh, Toronto and asked me as we were golfing, do you have a chapter here? And I said, not yet, but <laughs> I know that the social uh, the, the, there is a housing study that identifies the fact that um, um, we should have one here. Right. And he said, well, if you're going to get it started, let me help you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Helen Heath from our office was involved in initiating conversations, and uh, the rest is history. Now yeah. we've got three or four homes built, we've got a restore, and really all of these community building initiatives start with conversations with people who are identifying things that are important to them. Right. And um, you know, the same is true of uh, NeighborLink. Started with a conversation with three pastors and really from my perspective it was an opportunity for United Way to really identify the fact that we needed more people engaged in right. helping people in the community. And uh, this was an excellent opportunity to engage the faith community and uh, started with three pastors and three churches mm -hmm. and now it's, I think, close to 30 churches that are really? involved with NeighborLink. So faith community plays a, a remarkable role in, in helping people and I, I don't know that they get as much um, credit, credit yeah. as they could. Um, for what they're doing. Okay, so uh, Bill Carney says they still feel way with respect to uh, that way with respect to municipal services. So again, when we go from uh, after amalgamation, we still got the outside and we got the mm -hmm. inside. That's, that's what right. it feels like. That's right. And they still feel that way. And this comes up in every every conversation. Yeah, it does. What can you do to connect them? Well. Hot off the press. Hot off the press. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I know if you hand that, if you hold that up, it's going to be all backwards for it's people. It's all backwards. <laughs> but uh, Karen has brought me. Uh, well, Darren, Darren can't have brought me socks, and she's bringing me a flyer. Uh, well, and it's actually I good. Brought, though. I brought you something else too, but I'm going to. Oh. I'm going to. Ooh, yes, it's a big surprise. Um, but uh, she does have uh, the one, two, three value in all three sectors of the community, which we already talked business, about. Business, government, voluntary sector. Value in all generations, and then valuing all communities within Chatham Kent. And I think right. that's where you're going to talk. So about. number two really focuses on the fact that uh, the municipality, right at the moment, with uh, some of their younger staff, have really done a remarkable job in trying to attract and retain young people, right. bring them back. I've got a grandson that's that's doing an internship at OPG right now in, okay. in Darlington, but I would love for him to come back to Chatham Kent and, mm -hmm. and work here and, and raise his family here. Um, valuing all communities within Chatham Kent. Um, having lived in Tilbury when I first uh, returned to southwestern Ontario, I know uh, you know what's important to some of the people who live there. And when we think about um, the better together theme, yep. we are one municipality, right? whether we like it or not. <laughs> Yes. And um, talking to people in Tilbury, you know, there are issues that they're dealing with. Um, I would love to see the 
opening of the Thames River so that we can okay. get those boats back downtown. Yeah. Um, as, a, as a Rotarian president in the year 2000, I went to San Antonio. I went to the Economic Development Department, picked up a whole bunch of materials to bring back here. Right. We could have such a wonderful waterfront in downtown Chatham, and we have so much to, well, we have I, so many assets to, yeah. to celebrate. Well, well, when I was a kid, I remember my uncle pulling up uh, with his boat downtown, and there'd be boats upon boats at the Festival of Nations Three and deep. stuff like that, Three and deep. it was always exciting, Abs absolutely. and I don't think I've ever seen that since. No. Um, so. No. But we're we not going to be able to do that if we don't clean out the mouth of the Thames. Okay. So if we can find the resources to do that, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. And I'm guessing that would have to do with uh, a number of levels of government to make that happen. And you know, that's part of the challenge that we have as members of local government. A lot of the things that we uh, have to deal with are affected by what happens federally, right. what happens provincially, and by the time it gets down here, how yeah. much control do we really have mm -hmm. over the budget that, you know, has been allocated to us? So. Right. Um, Scott, how you doing, man? Uh, Karen, we need more housing through CK in Chatham. In Blenheim, the vacancy rate is zero. Real estate agents say there is zero inventory for sale. What can council do about this? And Scott, as a realtor, and if you guys ever buy <laughs> Would houses... Would you like to answer that uh, question? <laughs> well, it, it's true. I mean, uh, there is very limited um, inventory for sale, and there's always 10 buyers for each right. uh, house that does come up for sale. Right. Uh, so it's very tough for especially people that mm -hmm. are making a Chatham Kent wage mm -hmm. to compete with maybe an out-of-town buyer mm -hmm. who's just sold their house for lots more money. They come here because it's more affordable and they mm -hmm. don't mind paying a little bit more, so it prices a lot of our own people out that are living and working here already. Um, but there, there's people living here, and it, it could be split-ups or divorces or whatever, uh, but there's not enough inventory of houses. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we do need some new builds, um, affordable new builds, not yes. maybe not the yes. 500000 400000 300000 dollars range, but more somehow how do we get those houses under $200,000. Uh, I guess what... I. You're going to be on council. What are you going to do about this? <laughs> can we do, can we remove I, fees? Yeah, I think and stuff that they're like that? you know speaking about what's um, you know how we are affected by what happens provincially, and and just in the last week and a bit, um, with Ford's decision to eliminate the uh, basic income pilot, mm -hmm. um, I would love to see. I mean, when we talk about my theme of of no one left behind. I would love to eat, at least to aim for the fact right. that no one lives in poverty. No one doesn't have a roof over their head. No one is without nutritious food. And sometimes it's very expensive <laughs> to be poor. Yeah, um, everything gets more you, expensive when you when have to poor. shop yeah. at a place where you know your income is limited. And yeah. so you know, I think I think there's things that have to happen. From the attic and the basement and the side doors. Right, um, right. You can't just use, you know, one, one opportunity or one option to, to get to the answer. Um, there are a lot of root causes that we need to identify, and uh, and part of that is really listening to the people who are affected by the decisions that we try to make. We don't have all the answers, and when mm -hmm. we try to make decisions for people that. Um, they don't want us to make. You know? right. Maybe maybe that's not the best solution for mm -hmm. them. We might think it is, but yeah. that's why we need to sit down and say, if we try this, is this yeah. going to make any difference in your life? Because quality of life is something that everybody should enjoy. Especially in and, Canada. Uh, absolutely. I mean, when you think about Canada, yeah. I mean, you should have everything. Right. So. Um, Bill, again, uh, what is your opinion on downsizing council? It was discussed last year, but defeated. Is our municipality uh, top heavy? And uh, I guess, uh, as you've seen, Doug Ford's trying to reduce the council in Toronto, or I, I don't know the, where that's I think at. the timing of that was a little off. It might be a little <laughs> off. It would be um. <laughs> devastating if you're running there. Um, but yeah. we have 17 members of council here. Uh, I guess, what is your opinion on the possibility of downsizing? I think there's always a possibility of looking at how things can be done better. Mm -hmm. And I know that there have been a number of discussions. I've heard differing opinions from differing people about whether it should be the same and whether the pie should be split one right. way or the other. Um, 
I mean, even looking at um, Ward 6 and, and knowing that all the friends on the south end of Indian Creek Road right. <laughs> who can't yeah. vote for me, right? you know, is there a way that we can ensure that all of the little towns and villages yeah. and Chatham are served by the people who are going to be around that horseshoe? Right. And um, there's, there, there could be a better way, but I think it requires a lot more discussion. Right. I'm not evading the question, <laughs> but I think we could be a little smaller, not necessarily. What, what if we change? What if we change the conversation from size of council right. to making better, efficient, more efficient uh, you know, decisions? Because it takes forever, uh, and people in Chatham County, all over, will, will can can agree with this: is that everything we do takes forever. Right to actually get into motion. Some things. Right. Well, well that's government. Yeah. Well, right. It takes a long yeah. time to move a tanker. I right? I know, but uh, how can we make it more efficient? Would less people do that, or is there other things that you can do around the horseshoe that can can make things seem more efficient and better? Because really, um, at the end of the day, council doesn't make a whole lot of money to no. make a difference in reducing council. Council is right. the governing body. Mm -hmm. Council is like a board of directors yeah. that is responsible for setting the direction of the community, for determining what will happen. Mm -hmm. Administration, after they've been given the what, yep. determines how it should be done. So I think that's one thing that we could do a little better job with is trying to re-educate some folks about what council's role is. And if there is a plan in place that has been approved with lots of consultation from the citizenry, then that plan gets handed to administration. Right. And they're the ones that carry it out. Okay, so council and the mayor council are, could be aren't small. miracle workers. Co council could be smaller. Right if we didn't have to respond to some of the things that administration is responsible for. Bill, is that a good one? I think that was a good uh, good answer to that. Um, so, okay, no one left behind.ca is your website. Yes. Okay, so yes. people know that, and you'll probably post something on here. Hey, if you guys have questions, uh, send them in. Um, let us know what your questions are. They can be fun questions, if you like. It doesn't matter. The whole idea is to get, get to know Karen a little bit more. Um, now, what, what would you like to add? Um, valuing all generations, we do have um, an aging population in Chatham Kent. We do. And we do. Uh, as a realtor, we have trouble finding uh, places accessible, right? Uh, so, you know, one floor properties, uh, stuff like that. Accessibility and entertainment, especially. What can we do for the aging population that we have? There's a, a report that was released in 2015 um, by the municipality. Unfortunately, at the time, um, even though United Way was named as uh, accountable for some of the initiatives that right. were in there, I've now had an opportunity to, to have a look at it. And there's some really great um, initiatives that have been outlined in the plan, uh, the age-friendly plan. Um, housing, transportation, recreation, civic mm -hmm. engagement, all of these kinds of things. There, um, and, and speaking to the, the pamphlet there, I'm, I'm really looking for an opportunity to re-engage perhaps some of the folks that are in my age demographic. Okay. Um, and, you know, we know that there are a number of people coming from away yep. uh, to live here. And I think that with the efforts to try and attract and retain young people, there are services that could be provided to the growing population right. um, by young people that are, are wanting to come back. Awesome. Uh, okay, so Bill was happy with your answer. Um, James is giving you a tough one here. What are you bringing to the table? I like when people say that. What are you bringing to the table that you believe um, current council is not addressing currently from new business growth perspective? Uh, sell me on you. What are you bringing? To, um, so, do you believe there's anything that council's not addressing currently from business growth, or what can we do to kind of increase the growth of business uh, locally? Um, again, looking at balance, 
Right. I'm thinking government could be a little too big, business needs to be bigger, voluntary sector needs to be bigger. Back to the three-legged stool again. Right. Let's even out those legs. Yep. Um, I've, I've witnessed over the last 35 to 40 years of uh, working with the Canadian Mental Health Association and United Way in particular, the loss of manufacturing jobs. Right. Um, people tend to want to see those come back. They're not coming back. Um, this is a different world that we live in. Mm -hmm. um, interesting acronym that I picked up at a recent conference, which I think is hilarious, but um, we're living in a VUCA world right okay. now. Okay. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to type so, that in after. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it, it really does speak to the change that mm -hmm. is happening with the aging population, with climate change, with technology, even within our own business. There are things that have transpired that are going to be easier to do with new technology that right. has come about. So um, I'd really like to see more of an emphasis on support of small business employers that are actually in the business of employing people, yep. providing them with an income so that they have the quality of life that the majority of us have. There will always be people in the community that will need a hand up. We right. know that. The Bible says so. <laughs> so we, we can't do anything about that percentage of people. But I do think that we have an opportunity to pick some of those folks that are in situational poverty perhaps as opposed to generational poverty so that we have an opportunity to give them a hand up get them to work and then they're happy their work they're yep. making a, a living and they are, you know have the same opportunities that some of us have with having awesome. a holiday and doing those things that oh, we take for granted right? yes we do yes. um hey guys there's a good group of you hit the share button hit the like button if you have questions ask them i'm gonna now hit you with the things i like to talk about and uh that is the great ontario marathon trip um the railway line yeah. okay we have the railway line there's a little bit of controversy hey, mr Can we on recruit? the front page of the newspaper yeah there. mr bonnie was, was on the, yeah. the front page now, uh, what are your thoughts on there? And we'll get to my thoughts on why we should make it a, uh, a marathon trail. I'm for trails. Okay, good. Angelo Liguori would here, love me here, to say that. Here, here, give me some knuckles there. All right. <laughs> um, so you're all for trails. Okay, so how would we go about that? Okay, so there's, there's a bunch of rail on there. we got to see what we can do to recoup type thing. There's a, What's the process? There, the, the proposal is either sell the rail, sell all the stuff that it's sitting on, and turn it into a grassway and all the rest of it. Or perhaps have a conversation with the citizenry about what other opportunities might come to mind without making those decisions by ourselves. Okay. This is, I think this is one of those conversations that we could have a broader discussion about. Right. So. Awesome. And now let's move on to a sports complex. Now a sports complex with, you know, twin or triple pad arena, that's okay with me. I say go triple pad and settle for the twin pad. Okay, so, um, so I've already been through this with several <laughs> colleagues of mine who are saying, don't call it an arena, don't call it a twin pad sports arena. Complex. It's a sports complex and it could include a number of things. I think that we need to ensure that the revenue is there. First. Okay, and there are a lot of priorities in this community that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Roads and bridges and drainage ditches being three. Right, and we're always going to need that. And we have lots of them. Yeah, and that's <laughs> so, going to be constant. That's right. So that's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to determine whether things are a must-have or a nice-to-have, and I think the jury's still out on that. I, I'm, I'm not a hockey player, I don't play badminton, I'm a golfer, so, right. you know, I've talked to a number of people who are, who are hockey fans, and, well, you do uh, have you know, lots of they, golf I, courses, I, I but we don't I, have I, lots <laughs> of sports complexes. I know, I know, um, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, when you look at all the people that are sitting around the horseshoe, we can't all have the same likes, right? Yeah. That's what, that's what diversity is all about. Right, right. It's all about all being different and all liking different things. Um, 
I grew up in Windsor. I went to Red Wings games, yep. but only because my boyfriend dragged me there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, golf's my thing right now, and I know that a, a number of my really great friends are really advocating for ongoing maintenance for some of the facilities that are already here. Mm -hmm. um, I've been told that, um, and even back to Red Feather days when we were having broom ball games, the washrooms need to be upgraded, the dressing yeah. rooms need to be upgraded, mm -hmm. and perhaps that's where we start. And then when we find all this revenue that we're going to generate from the casino that can be invested in a new sports complex yeah. or a multi-faceted right. complex. So um, it doesn't look like you're totally sold on the sports complex yet. Um, Look, but let's you got uh, me on the trails. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, we got the trails. Okay, we got to get you moving on the sports complex. Now let's um, kind of go with something. When you look at the places that do have a sports complex, they also uh, that have been built in the last five to ten years. Okay. They also have an increasing population. Yes. And they have a healthier population. Yes. And they have a growing economy. Yes. Okay. When you look at Chatham Kent, okay, we don't have that sports complex. We don't have a healthy, we don't, we're not close to the top for health. Is there anything in your mind that you can kind of make sense of that? And how would we create a healthier community and increase the I'm population like Kevin, the other people? I'm thinking of Kevin Costner here. If you build it, they will come. I'm yes. not sure that that, I'm not sure that that will work. I but tell you what, um, funny story is that uh, a year and a half ago, I actually went to the Field of Dreams. So Kevin Costner was correct. If you build it, they will come. I went to, and I got some corn. I had to steal it and smuggle okay. it back. And uh, some dirt from home plate. Um, so, but when I was driving there, I was like, this is quite amazing. You know, this is an old movie. If you build it, they will come. And I showed up like 25 years later. So that was pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. So uh, if you go with the Kevin Costner, maybe we should build that sports mm. complex. I like your thinking. Um, <laughs> Hey Gloria, how you are me you? Into it. See hey that? Gloria, how are you? Um, Gloria's part of my 6 a.m. walking group. Oh, uh, great! Uh, we're we're trying to make ourselves healthy again. Um, good. Yeah, when it comes to health, yeah, that's one of the biggest issues. What do you think is the biggest issue for you? Like uh, when you for me personally, for you personally, I've, I have had a sedentary job for too many years. Okay. And I bought a Fitbit a year and a half ago, and right. the battery wore out. So I'm going to show up at your six o'clock thing. Okay. And so, and so and so is Helen. All right. Yeah. I'll so, believe it see, when we see okay. it, right? <laughs> but I can't do it until after the 17th of okay. August. Okay. So, uh, hey, guys, if you guys have any more questions, uh, throw them out there right now. Uh, we're going to wrap this up quite uh, shortly here. Um, I'm, I'm still looking at James's question here about the... Um, let's go back. Um, so what are you bringing to the table that you believe ca current council is not addressing currently from the second new half of this question, where uh, he says, sell, sell me, me on, on you. you. What, like, what are you bringing to the so table? So my background, okay. right? My background. Um, I have worked... I think he was yelling when he said that. Too. Sorry, James. Um, <laughs> I have worked for municipal government. Okay. I worked in the Parks and Recreation Department in Thunder Bay when uh, I moved there between 70 and 79. I just happened to be the secretary for one of the fellows that I worked with, my first experience with politics. Okay. Um, my co-worker decided that he was going to run for the uh, provincial party. Okay. And asked me if I would be his campaign secretary. So I said, yeah, I can take minutes. So mm -hmm. I'd be happy to do that. That was my first introduction to politics. And when I moved back to southwestern Ontario and moved to Tilbury, I had been in touch with him. This is before social media and texting right. and all this kind of stuff. But I mentioned to him that I was in this little town of 4,200 people, mm -hmm. and I didn't know anybody. And he said, well, why don't you run for council? I said, me? And he said, well, if I could do it, <laughs> you can do it. Anyway, this, this gentleman, who I was campaign secretary for, um, is actually running for mayor in Thunder Bay. Really? Right now, <laughs> after all these years. 
And he so, wasn't originally from Thunder Bay. He was originally from Thunder Bay. Okay. He served as an MPP. He served as an MP. He's been on council, and he's now running for mayor. And does he know you're running for council? He does. That's awesome. He does. That's a good story. So not only have I been working for um, government, I served on Tilbury Town Council. Mm -hmm. I went back to school in 2006 to get my certificate in economic development so that I could learn how it works. Okay. And I have to say that there have been people who have been modestly critical of the economic development department in terms of attracting business and and I think it's because people really don't understand the work that goes into trying to attract a new business to town mm -hmm. and all of the work that has to be done in advance to ensure that the amenities are in place when you're facing another community that has maybe a few more assets than you do like a sports complex uh, it could be <laughs> or a walking trail <laughs> um, you know it it's, it's not something that yeah. you can just snap your fingers and hope for and it happens. There's yeah. a lot of work that goes into that and, and some of those folks in the ActDev department work really, really hard to, to make that happen for us. See, so I give, myself, them, give them a little bit of patience I'm all, here. I, I myself am all for blowing the budget on economic <laughs> development and, and getting them Let's to uh, another level because Let's do it. you know when you do compare our economic development, and people just look at results, yeah. okay? That's the only thing that matters to people is did we get a result for uh, what we're doing? And if they don't see results, then it doesn't matter how well funded or how hard they work, it doesn't matter. Uh, people wanna see results, so um, I hear and, you and there. And the other, the other piece of this whole sort of three-legged stool thing and why I'm so focused on the balance is because I have owned my own business. Right. My husband and I, had a first choice hair cutters franchise. We had 65 employees, seven stores. I've done the books. I've done a little, done a little bit of the management of the employees. Right. So I know, I mean, it took us seven years before things turned around and we were starting to see black. Yeah. And so I know how hard it is for small business owners to, to get things started and to keep things going right. and to ensure that the employees have what they need in order to stay. Right. And so. Okay, we got one from Ryan Jackson. Do you feel our downtown is healthy? And I'm getting just gonna reword this to downtowns are healthy. Yes. Uh, why yes. or why not? Why? What would you do, or try to do to improve the quality of our downtowns? Hi, Ryan. I um, mentioned just a little earlier about um, the vibrancy of downtowns that come when people are actually living downtown and spending their money downtown. Uh, I know there's been a, a lot of effort over the last number of years to try and get people living downtown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there was an opportunity at one time to encourage the store owners to stay open, maybe just one night a right. week, uh, first Fridays or whatever. Um, we experienced that when we spent time in Florida some time ago. And, uh, you know, I'm, opening opening the mouth of the Thames and getting more tourists to come back this way and, and making it a, a really vibrant downtown. Um, I think every single downtown in Chatham-Kent has something to offer its its citizens mm -hmm. and uh, we should we should focus on that. Okay yeah. and hopefully when these condos get built if they ever get built and complete that'll get actually her done. Get it done. Get her done. So we're all for getting that um, done. Um, when we talk about small business, we talk about uh, most of the small business owners that kind of, they don't comment on here, but they message me right after and say, what can we do to get more skilled employees? Because there's a lot of people that they're just dying for more employees. Uh, they need more more workers, but they don't have the skill sets that they need. What, what can we do to bring in more skill sets or, or create uh, an atmosphere where people can learn better. That's that's the whole education piece mm -hmm. that's so important. Um, and I think that there are opportunities for mentorships with people who already know how to do these jobs that right. they would be willing to take a couple of young people under their wing and teach them something. You know, it's um, you know there are a lot of people who use their heads and a lot of people who use their hands yeah. and it's all important. Um, each one of us has been given a gift and 
we have to identify what that gift is and, yep. and use it. Yeah. And um, let's see here. So are these flyers going to end up in people's mailboxes at one point? Well, I'm, I, as I said earlier, um, I'm retiring a week from Friday. So right. my pamphlets are ready. My signs are ready. Okay. Um, my website is ready. I've been working on this sort of hit and miss it's over the last three months. A good looking flyer. Thanks. Yeah. You can thank my brother. He's, okay. he's very talented this way. Um, and the web website is no one left behind .ca, and all this information is already on that? This information is not on there okay. yet, but will be. It will be okay. now, that, now that the pamphlets are ready. Um, my website basically um, speaks about who I am and right. you know, some of the um, initiatives that I've been involved in over the years. And, uh, but this will be going up as well. Awesome. As soon as I can figure out my my grandson, who is um, who has been the one to help me set this up, because yep. I'm not as good on social media stuff. I I just well, people are liking this I interview, did, so I, you're doing I, well. I, I, I did the other day. I was trying to figure out if I could remember what he told me about how to post a, okay. a, an endorsement, and I figured it out all by myself. All right. I'm so proud of myself. Awesome. <laughs> what do you think we can do? to encourage more people to get out and vote, especially youth, okay? Because oh. Chatham Kent uh, traditionally has a, a history of low voter turnout, and uh, that's not good. But I think there's something different this time around. We do have online voting, makes it mm -hmm. easier. We do have advanced uh, voting. We don't get a whole year to campaign, as they used to have, no. like, uh, since uh, January 1st, you could start campaigning. Right. So you only get a, a period of time that's small. Um, what can we do to increase voter turnout, um, especially among youth? What's really interesting, and this takes me back to the Nurture the Future project that we did um, quite a, 20 years ago now. Um, there was a young fellow who came to Chatham, and he was involved in something called Kids Vote. Do okay. you remember that? I th yes, I do remember that. And uh, Taylor Gunn was his name. Good name. And he was involved in setting up mock elections in the high right. schools and trying to get people educated about... Uh, the issues and who the candidates were and, mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. I think that that would be a great opportunity if somebody would like to take that on. And I know that our Chatham Kent nonprofit network uh, it will be exploring an opportunity to try and ensure that the candidates are aware of the value that the nonprofit sector right. plays in Chatham Kent. Awesome. But before we close, okay, right? I have something for you. All right, it's not socks. Not socks, okay. okay. Um, as you can appreciate, having given notice uh, to my board of directors almost seven months ago now, mm -hmm. I have been cleaning my office. Okay. And I've been finding things. <laughs> oh, old, geez. old things. All right. So this is what I found. <laughs> oh my, where did you get that? Let me see this. It's yes. backwards, everybody. It's backwards, but it does say uh, slow down, highway41.com. Now you tell everybody what that was about. Ha -ha. So uh, back in the day, wow, I can't believe that. That's an oldie. Uh, back in the day, I created a website uh, back when websites were just being created right. to raise awareness for people to you know, either slow down on the 401 or create um somewhat safer because it was called Carnage Alley, especially after 1998, okay. 1999, and then it's still today, and I think Allison's story actually touches on it, uh -huh. uh, where she's going for the barriers, which is, we're talking 20 years. That's right. This is, this that's, is, that's how old that this is. This is 20 years <laughs> old uh, that I created these bumper stickers, and people from all over Ontario um, mm -hmm. got them, and the website did create a lot of momentum on getting a lot of things changed. It didn't really change as much in Chatham Kent, but that's when they started the three lane ideas. And um, it is quite amazing that it's taken so long to even get these barriers right going. And uh, so I can't believe this But you this see is with awesome. the entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> there you go. And now we're here. And now we're here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that is very, do I get to keep this? Yes. All right, good, I'm going to, yes. Awesome, well, thank you very much. And thank you for coming on. Yeah, you're um, welcome. We need Karen on council. All right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Tom. Report. Okay. So hopefully we'll have you back uh, at one point uh, before the election comes to uh, a close. That'd and, be awesome. uh, and you can update us on how the campaign's going and yep. what you're hearing yep. and what people are telling us. So 
Uh, tonight we're going to have Chris June at 7.30. We had Ernst Sterling earlier if you want to watch replay. And this will have a replay as well. So don't be scared to hit that share button. It's, it's right like at your fingertips. You can see the share button. All you have to do is hit it and uh, it will share with uh, other people. So thank you guys uh, very much. Thank you, Good. Karen, for, for coming on. And thank you for this. I can't believe that. That's a blast, <laughs> right? Um, it's not socks. Sorry. <laughs> it's not socks. It's better than socks. You've, <laughs> you've uh, taken it to another level. Okay. So thank you guys. Uh, we always appreciate Thanks your engagement. In, even when you say hi, hello, or hit the uh, thumbs up button. And if you have questions, that's always great. So again, hit the share button, hit the replay button. Anything you want to say in closing? Before we no, end? but there's a couple of people on there that I want to meet. James Pacevich for sure. I'm okay. told that I need to talk to you. James is always uh, an okay. interesting one to talk to. I like to talk. <laughs> I, I meet James the odd time, we we'll go for a walk and talk, and uh, we disagree on a ton of things, but uh, always great conversation okay. with James. So. Good. Um, and uh, it's important to not... Uh, to know. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys very much, and we will see you guys later, and we're going to hit the finish button. Bye, Scott. Bye. -bye.